G'day folks, it's DIYGuy123 here bringing you another do-it-yourself video. Today we're going to talk about what to do when your propane stove lights fine but it won't stay going. I'm not an expert but this is what I've learned about these types of heaters and I'm happy to share it with you. So if we have a propane tank and then propane comes out of the tank, well very quickly there's a regulator to keep the pressure down to a safe level and then tip where there's a flame. So gas is coming out. Well, that's no good. You need to have it controlled, right? There's a valve in here that is off, low, high, and anywhere in between. Well, they've put some safety mechanisms into this because if you turn it on high and you don't have the flame lit, you're gonna be pumping unburnt propane into your living quarters. It's not safe. So what this particular heater and many like it have is there's a valve between the output of the hand control and where the fuel comes out and it's an electrically controlled valve so when there's no electricity applied to the valve it's closed and the propane will not flow but there's something called a thermocouple that creates a positive and a minus charge only when the thermocouple is hot so when there's a flame against the thermocouple it creates this positive charge and it will open the valve and allow propane to flow. And you might be wondering, how does the flame ignite and get this thing hot if it's blocked here? Well, there's a manual override that's coupled with this on-off control. So basically, when you take the on-off control on mine and you push it in, it overrides that valve right there and allows fuel to flow and allows you to ignite the flame, which causes the thermocouple to heat and then when you release the knob and it's spring loaded and releases, by that time there's enough electricity generated by the thermocouple to keep the valve open. What we were experiencing was we could push the knob in, ignite it, and light the flame and it would run fine. But as soon as you want to let your hand off, the fuel would shut off and the flame would go out. So let's go take a look. And the top part was held on by one, two, three screws and they've been removed already. And what you see here is this is where the fuel comes out it comes up into this burner tube, and this is where the flame will happen. And this device right here is the spark. So when I push this valve in and rotate it into the start position, it triggers that spark. Now this is the thermocouple. It is damaged. There's a broken tip on it, and basically it's not doing its job. Now if I show you what's underneath here, that thermocouple has two wires, one that connects to the chassis of the heater and one that connects to this electric solenoid. And when the voltage is applied by that thermocouple, it pulls this solenoid back. And when that plunger is pulled back, it allows fuel to flow, even when you don't have your hand pushed on the control. When I press on this, there's a lever in here that's actually pressing on this to allow fuel to flow. I've got a brand new one and there's a link to purchase this on the website. There are different styles. I'll encourage you to take a close look at this. Check the description if you're interested in that. I'm gonna show you how to test the voltage to make sure that the thermocouple is working properly. Even if the thermocouple is out of the machine, hook up some leads to a multimeter, put your multimeter on the DC volt scale, and now I'm gonna heat that thermocouple up and we should see about 30 volts. Watch what happens when we heat this up. I'm just heating the tip. When it gets to a critical temperature, yeah, there's 25, there's 30 millivolts right there. That tells me that this thermocouple is working. We're gonna take the old thermocouple out and put the new one in. So to change it, it's pretty easy. You remove that screw right there. That removes the retaining clip. And we'll pull that off after. And then under here, there's an electrical connection that gets disconnected. And then a Phillips screw that holds the common connection. Take that guy out. I just need to transfer this clip over to my new one. And now I'll reinstall the securing screw and we're done on the top. Take that guy and shove it in that connection. I had this valve out, so I will just double check these screws to make sure they're snug. Okay, and just take the excess and tuck it out of the way. I did see it have this wire right here, not touching that housing. If it is, you kind of bend it out of the way. You want it to go through kind of the center of that hole. And I reattach the top and put the three screws back in the housing. And now we can let go and it will stay running. That's how easy it is to fix a thermocouple. Remember, you can do it yourself. 